Welcome to Thriver TV, the place to break free from narcissistic abuse with quantum tools and understandings. A big part of narcissistic abuse commonly is financial abuse and it's one of the most widespread devastations in this community. And today's Thriver TV episode is all about that and specifically how we can fall into financial dependencies and abuse with narcissists, what it all means and how we can get out of that and heal, restart our life at any age and become financially independent and even abundant. Please know, I understand that there is other forms of financial abuse that we can suffer, which is like enabling and being siphoned out of our money by parasitical people. And I'll address that in another episode. But today's topic is all about our dependency and handing our power away in reliance to narcissists. Okay, so let's get going. It's a really rare person after narcissistic abuse who's not wiped out to varying degrees financially. For most people, myself included, it literally means starting your life financially all over again. And so many of you ask this, how do I get over the financial abuse? How can I leave when I'm financially dependent on the narcissist? And even when I do leave, how am I going to make it work in my life? And I believe the true answers, as they always are with our Thriver Recovery work, if we want to heal for real, is to work out why this has happened to us, rather than stay stuck in what has happened to us, and heal those deeper reasons which means changing those traumas and beliefs so that we can stop powerlessly holding somebody else or even the outside world responsible for the state of our life because that only keeps us in eternal frozen victimization, which then allows us when we break free from that to emerge released from our internal barriers which then releases us from the external ones, allowing us to restart and regenerate financially in more abundant ways than we were ever able to, even before this happened, no matter what our age is. When we clean up the blocks within our inner being regarding finances, the unconscious sabotages are removed and then possibility, inspiration, opportunity and support opens up. And it also means that we're not going to be susceptible to handing over power, resources, money and our security again. And I promise you, as you will learn that this natural source of flow, well-being and expansion is available for all of us, no matter what our situation is and no matter how powerless and stuck you feel right now. And I understand because I felt the same way. But when you release yourself enough to be able to tap into that flow of life force and well-being, that's when things are going to start opening up and changing for you. And this is why today in this Thriver TV episode, I want to deeply investigate the ways that we can get hooked into financial abuse with narcissists and identify the things that we may not have realized, which can be incredibly insidious and unconscious that are not allowing us to break free from this terrible trauma. And more than ever now, I'm really realizing that what's going on with narcissistic abuse globally, in concert with our own ascension, which is our healing, our waking up and coming out of our trances, the healing of our consciousness, is to do with changes of era. And this is actually important for today's topic. We're moving away from power over which was a great deal of the patriarchal systems of the last 5,000 years, to power with, which is about shared power, which means mutuality, community, oneness, 
coming together in cooperative and harmonious ways, starting between us and ourselves and our own integration, and that's then extending that healing out to the genders and between races, creeds and religions. All that has been separated, healing towards unity consciousness. Our world and our relationships can no longer survive if we're going to be at war with each other over power, energy and resources. Likewise, if we're not willing to grow ourselves up and become integrated and whole in our confident health and our capacity to be a force that generates what we want for ourselves, then we can't expect to get it healthily in relationships with other people. We are meeting ourselves more and more now. There is no avoiding it. The veil between the outer and the inner has got so much thinner. That's a quantum reality. We're in a quantum quickening. And we now see the evidence of our outer world reflecting back to us what's going on in our inner world almost instantly. If we're out of alignment, we're not getting the results we want. That's what this quickening is all about. That's why time is going faster, truly, because we don't have time now not to be integrated. It's time to wake up to so within, so without. And the main way, and I believe the most dangerous way we can get hooked into being financially abused by narcissists is dependency. If we codependently assign people to be the source of finances and security that we're not being for ourselves, then these people will not reflect back what we need and want, which is that security. They are much more likely to bring us even more financial insecurity and loss. And of course, there are times within healthy relationships where one person in a relationship will take over being the breadwinner, such as when women take time off to raise a family and the husband becomes a sole provider. And in relationships of shared power now, healthy relationships, there's even more and more men that are starting to be house husbands and they're staying at home with children because women have greater earning capacity and more established careers. All of that kind of thing is healthy within relationships of shared power, respect and mutuality. When a codependency becomes unhealthy, in a financial sense, is when we do what I did and what so many of us have done, connected to people to provide us with the security that we don't believe that we're going to be able to provide for ourselves. Many of us, myself included, had this feeling to the outer world and on paper I was very successful, but I had this terrible feeling constantly that I couldn't survive on my own, I wouldn't be able to generate my own life, and I couldn't have a wonderful life without a partner. And in other words, what we do when we do that is we are truly not operating like healthy, solid adults, regardless of our gender, even though this specific issue is more common with women. So this means rather than being a healthy person looking for a whole partner, we still feel like an insecure in a, in a child looking for a parent. And a lot of that's really unconscious at first. I used to do that, seek what I thought was capable, powerful men who would look after me in this way. And then I discovered that with their generosity and their finances came control, power over, and also my terror of leaving and not being able to survive on my own. These were the men who I also suffered terrible financial abuse from. So I ended up much worse off than before I even started with that insecurity. It's dangerous always if we're reliant on someone providing us what we are not as adults as yet providing for ourselves. Because then without this person, no matter how badly they treat us, 
We would feel empty, worthless, incapable and insufficient. Because of this, we're likely to hand over personal rights. We're going to live not aligned with our true values and we're also likely to experience abuse, even terrible abuse. Money is one of the biggest traps where we can fall into this. And we're in an egoic consumerism society where what people have is valued more than who they are on the inside. This is all about false selves. And when we believe a lifestyle and what we have is more valuable than our souls and we don't we don't listen to our emotional self, the language of our soul screaming in pain, and we start selling our soul to get security, hold it and keep it, then we truly are in for a very, very hard time because our soul is gonna bring us back to the truth. Who you are, how you feel, and what grants you daily bliss is what is important. And none of what you have grants you that. What grants you that is only your aligned, connected relationship with yourself, life and others, period. And the interesting thing is when you get that right and you give up the props, lies and inner disputes, you are continually having to live a false life. That is when your true life, which includes sustainable, durable abundance, comes into focus and you start generating it but you can't get your true self and your true life through living a false life or after that disintegrates by simply ignoring the inner traumas and going after abundance first to try to rebuild it doesn't work for all of us coming into consciousness the need is to develop our own inner solidness and truths independence of others and not dependently seek others to make us whole including in the realm of money and security it's about giving up the attraction to people who grant you what you are not granting yourself if that is what you are seeking the relief from the insecurity of how can i survive on my own or and the egoic desires of money believing that that's your identity what you have like my dear friend Kerry, who I did a Thriver show with, she escaped a relationship with a successful narcissist who used to be her type, the business guy, who ironically caused her grave financial loss. And then that traumatized her terribly. But then by working hard on herself to release that trauma, heal and become her own source, she and ending up loving her ability for the first time ever to feel whole and complete by herself she then met her partner who was a tradie and sean just happened to later this gorgeous guy who i've met with my partner he's just beautiful sean as the tradie just happened to hit it big in an internet business and became virtually an overnight success as a successful entrepreneur. And now both him and Kerry are incredibly abundant and successful, but in no way was she connecting to him as her new partner for security or money. She'd already got that going beautifully in her life herself. So be very aware of your motivations because even when unconscious, we need to be really aware even before we've done the healing work because neediness will always bring you face to face with even more neediness on that issue because you've not yet become what you seek on an inner level. Money is a massive area where this happens for people and it was a massive area where it happened for me. And this is because money is a huge trigger. It's all about survival programs. So we need to understand this. The things that are missing emotionally within us that we have lack and feelings of fear and pain on, those things are gonna stay missing. 
Your sole mission is not to get stuff. It's to be whole and then you can have all the stuff you want because you don't need it because it starts showing up as the manifestation of more wholeness that you already feel on the inside. And maybe awfully, you're still presently stuck in a relationship with a narcissist where you're being financially abused and you feel dependent. And maybe the narcissist controls all the money, withholds money from you and abuses you with money. Or maybe you're with an altruistic narcissist whose generosity is about granting you money, but this is about buying you and making you feel like you are totally reliant on the money. And of course, there's the guilt trips that punish you and control you. And maybe whatever the case, you don't have your own source of income. Maybe your health has now suffered so much from the abuse that you don't feel like you can generate any income. Maybe you've only always raised your children. Maybe you gave up any career choices in order to support the narcissist. I can't tell you how many people contact MTE every day who are in this situation with narcissistic people. Some of them realize what they need to do and many more ask, what can I do? My situation is hopeless. So let's get really clear about this, the solution. The solution is always the same and it can only be found within the deep understanding of this truth. We will never generate a different reality in our life unless we ourselves become different because the quantum reality we live in is so within so without our inner beliefs and subconscious programming is playing out in the outer world to the letter so if we want a different reality then we need to work out what is going on inside us and change who we are being meaning change the composition of our inner being, our beliefs and levels of trauma or otherwise, so that life can unfold for us in a different way. And I promise you, realizing and applying this is beyond powerful. And don't for one moment believe that your outer reality is dictated by anything or anyone else, regardless of how powerful and real that may seem. It isn't because when you change your inner composition, you change the cogs, the mechanics of all of creation in your reality. And there is nothing more powerful than that. So let me share my own example of financial abuse and loss and trauma. I tried through cognitive therapy for years to address my traumas regarding fear of security and why I work so hard and obsessively to get ahead, always fearing I wouldn't be safe unless I did. And why despite being capable, I always felt like I needed a man to survive. And all I had come up with after years of therapy, decades, was my mother had been dependent on my father and I'd learned that. And I'd never healed from my security fears. Also, I had this thing where I didn't plan anything with my money, such as projects, expansions, investments, or even holidays. I literally felt powerless and worthless to do any of that without a man. Initially in the loss of the narcissistic relationship and my money and all of my resources that I'd worked so hard to achieve in my life as a single workaholic person, the trauma was indescribable. I felt like I was going to die. I felt like I had no status or worth anymore and that I was a social outcast. No one would ever want me. And there was no way I would ever be able to rebuild. The great thing was that when my breakdown happened, it was so bad. I had to come inwards to meet and heal myself. 
Life and work could not go on as normal. I could no longer do what I used to do, get up again and make up ground and obsessively work and try to frenetically secure my security and try to establish some feelings of worthiness. And it was then that I finally met me that I discovered the true key. All I'd wanted had been within me anyway. Life was not about getting the stuff to feel secure. It was about feeling secure. At that stage of my life, I'd lost everything. There seemed to be no way to reboot financially. I'd even given up on all of that. That had even become completely irrelevant because this, and that was something that previously my ego would never have allowed to happen. My psyche injuries were so big that my ego couldn't even hold itself up anymore with the beliefs like, look at you, you have nothing, you're worthless, you're no good, you'll never amount to anything ever again. And this is when I had the biggest shift in my life, which became the entire foundation of the Thriver Recovery Model. My only motivation became about feeling better addressing the traumas within me that were eating me alive. And the trauma of money and security loss was one of the biggest monsters inside me. If you take one thing away from this episode today, let it be this thing, this understanding. When you work on yourself at feeling better on anything that hurts you as your sole focus, that thing will heal, period. So after creating Quantum Freedom Healing and working with the NARP program healings, I was able to feel into my financial terrors and traumas and discover, hold, release and evolve myself from the terrible beliefs that were completely sabotaging my ability to A, be a healthy financial source to myself and B, have a healthy relationship with a man where I could share power and generate security safely within the relationship. These were the painful false beliefs that were playing out to the letter, causing my financial disasters over and over again, all the way to the life-changing make or break relationship with a narcissist. No man will want me if I'm successful which was ironically tied in with the double bind of, I have no worth if I'm not successful. There was also, I can't secure life on my own. I need a man to do it. There was also, I'll be punished and rejected if I have my own life and independence. And I am nothing and no one if I'm doing anything in my life without a man. I also had beliefs directly related to thinking that money was evil and wrong and other people deserved it and I didn't and God didn't want me to bless me with money and abundance. I had all sorts of generational past life and childhood programming beliefs that were not serving me about money. Please know finances and money are areas in our life that are commonly in deep trauma and sabotage and there can be lots of internal work to do on it. I had tons that I had to do on it. I used to make it and lose it and have to start from scratch all over again. That's what was happening to me constantly. What is great is when we do that work is the feeling of security comes and that feeling of life force God, source, creation, whatever your understanding of a higher power is, is flourishing us and nourishing us constantly. That feeling comes before the actual goodies for real arrive. And that's the only way it can happen. Once I found and loaded up and released and replaced my previous traumas with my higher self function on them, I instantly shifted and back then even though I'd lost so much financially and I still didn't have anything I started to feel abundant 
And this is so important to understand. What is missing stays missing. However, when we've released the trauma and we've replaced it with source, which is our higher power, which has the ability to heal what we can't, when we have the feeling of it, then the physical evidence comes because we don't need it to come. In essence, what is showing up is more of us. And truly, I don't like the whole law of attraction rap that we can get hooked into, which is visualize, imagine, feel it. I much It's putting ice cream on top of poop. It really is. I much prefer releasing our traumas and filling with source, which is abundance, and simply being it for real without having to do all that effort. I remember back in those days when I was cleaned out financially and recovering myself, the utter joy of receiving the smallest gesture from the universe confirming my evolution in this area, such as a neighbor offering me a small token for free and me accepting it. It felt like winning lotto to me. These were things my ego would have scoffed at previously, but I was working on the feeling. I was working on healing and being whole about it on the inside. That was my only focus. Those of you who are caught in terrible dependencies right now, I know all of this may seem totally unrealistic and I may you just want concrete doing things that will change your situation, but please know, no amount of doing is going to make up for the being that is sabotaging you. This is the deal. Our subconscious is running 95% plus of our lives. It's the powerhouse that generates brilliant, billions of chemical processes that keep us alive every millisecond. These are things that our conscious mind can't even grasp, let alone perform. Your subconscious programs are pulling the strings of the entire field in your experience, which means how you're showing up, how you feel, how you think, who you're with, what is unfolding, what opportunities or not you can access, all of it. I've seen time and time again, people have created miracles as a result of making their life mission, finding and cleaning up their inner beliefs and traumas that have been playing out with narcissists so devastatingly. One standout example is a lady in the community who I will call Matilda. Matilda was in her 50s and she was, she'd been married to a very powerful wealthy man for decades who abused her horrifically in so many ways. And she was completely financially hamstrung by him. And he was connected to powerful people. He threatened her with all sorts of terrible things if she ever tried to leave him. She started working with the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program from home while he was at work during the days. And then she did leave him. She went to a refuge shelter. That was her only option. And she took nothing but some clothes. And she continued working on herself in the safety of the refuge. Then she moved in with a friend. Then she started working at a small firm. And then she created her own art healing business. Today, she's in a loving relationship. She is successful in her own right. And she's even reconnected with all her children that he tried to alienate her from. This was Matilda's take on her journey. Nothing was worth losing my soul for anymore. Things that got so bad, I knew I was dying where I was. And even if I died, any peace was preferable to the way that I was living. I wasn't even scared of him killing me anymore. All I wanted to do was make peace with my own soul. When I did the deeper healing work, I discovered that all of what was happening to me was a repeat of my beliefs and traumas from my childhood and my ancestors before me and they were trapped inside me. And when I healed those traumas, joy and hope opened up for me and growth, possibility and miracle started flooding into my life. I started again from nothing, but in the truest way I'd ever known that was worth so much more to me than any 
previous millions had been. So please know there are many Matildas in this community and I know many women who did go to refuges. That was all they had available to them who have rebuilt from there. And these women, so many women and men, have incredible stories of resurrection from complete financial ruin. So please know there is no limits and there is no outside, meaning the unfolding of you out into life as your highest and best self is not dictated by the market, the trends, what other people are supposedly looking for. You have got something unique inside you that is your passion, that is life force flowing through you as you. Your soul doesn't get it wrong. When I started this Thriver Revolution, the trend was victimization. There was huge resistance to turning inwards and taking radical personal responsibility to heal. But I knew that it was my calling. I knew this was what I needed to share and I did. And it's the same for you. What is it that lights you up? What is your truth? What is the niche that you're going to create for you to fit into? Because I promise you there is one and when you clear your wounds and your limiting beliefs, you're going to connect with it. And if you've got the beliefs, I'm too old or people aren't looking for me, get rid of them. If you have the beliefs, no one's going to listen to me, get rid of them. It's an illusion that there's an outside going on. There's not. And most of all, I hope that no matter how hopeless it all seems for you, that you find the strength, healing, solutions and support that this incredible community can offer you to change your life, including the ability to create your own security and be free of terrible dependencies beyond description. There are many, many NART members in this community who can help support you, who've healed exactly what you're going through, who've made it out to the other side, to thriving. You don't have to do this alone. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and if this deeply resonates with you, I would love you to sign up and connect to my free resources, which is a free 16 day recovery course an invitation to a healing workshop with me where you are going to get a shift and relief and power very quickly, as well as a set of eBooks and so much more. So to access these, just click the link at the top right of this video. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified as soon as each new one is released. So until next time, Keep smiling, keep healing, keep thriving because there's nothing else to do. Lots of love. Bye-bye.